limiting beliefs. I'm Mayland and today I kind of want to talk about limiting beliefs. I feel like in my past I have kind of self-sabotaged or held myself back because I've kind of had these beliefs, you know, um, in the past it's been that I've been kind of like a sad creator or kind of like an artist kind of musician or it's been um, that I'm below other people and so I feel like I have to do so much to catch up to other people or yeah those are just two examples that I have and first before I, we go into limiting beliefs I just wanted to kind of touch on what is our identity and when I say that you might say oh I'm Malin who like that's my name but is that who I am or is that just kind of like this label for who I am or is it a construction of words or is it just a sound that I'm making through my mouth that doesn't actually that isn't actually who I am so what is underlying beneath that in my my clothes in my, my my appearance that's a part of me but my appearance has changed you know when I was nine I didn't look like what I did now and I can change my clothes if I wanted to oh <laughs> I got a bit into it very quickly um so what am I beneath that am I my thoughts well my thoughts change all the time and you know a thought that I have now may not be the same thought that I have later thoughts that I've had in the past aren't the same that I've had you know, it's always changing. So what am I, am I my feelings? Am I what I'm feeling? Am I my emotions and kind of that sort of thing? Well, no, because that's kind of changed and that can kind of, is dependent on other things as well. So what am I, what is beneath all of these things? It's our awareness, our consciousness. And that's kind of who we are, you know? All of these thoughts, beliefs, these images, these appearances, your haircut, your clothes, these aren't us. These are just kind of visual representations that are put forth, you know, but these are kind of shallow, you know, we have to go deep into the surface of these. So how does this relate to limiting beliefs? Well, how did you develop limiting beliefs? Let's kind of look in the past, you know, um, most of the time it's from occurrences, experiences, other people telling us something, um, how we were raised as our parents, because as kids, we were quite impressionable. And even little kind of things that have happened to us, you know, kind of dictate how we behave and how we kind of do things. And I'll give you an example for me. So my upbringing, you know, it was good. It wasn't perfect, but it was a lot of, it was quite strict. There was lots of rules and I feel like I had to obey them to do anything good or to be, you know, kind of accepted kind of in my family. And so that led me to the belief like, oh, I should be... Um, doing things for other people, you know, I should be making sure I'm doing the right thing for other people and This kind of became a limiting belief for me because I went on to live most of my teenage years or all of my teenage years and I was Closed off by this, you know, I wasn't finding out who I am what I enjoy I was kind of worried about oh, what do other people think what's kind of acceptable Even though this wasn't conscious. This was kind of the unconscious back kind of decisions that were kind of coming up you know it's like oh what would this person like you know I've got to agree with them don't um, assert myself and put myself kind of out there and this also kind of ties into the self-worth that I kind of talked about in the last video the paradox of self-worth so check that out if you'd like to kind of understand self-worth and self-esteem a bit more kind of an insight that I had with it but let's go back to limiting beliefs so these are things that have come from the past and they've kind of had an impression on, on us and you'll kind of realize like, oh, this is kind of like, it's kind of like being a seed that's kind of planted in my mind, you know. And with our identity, you know, we are not our thoughts, our feelings or our emotions. And we are our consciousness behind that, behind that. So we can kind of learn to observe and just see and like notice, like, oh, this kind of arises when this happens. That's interesting. And then um, I found it beneficial to kind of journal and find out where did that come from and then you can kind of go right back and kind of see and realize like oh I did this because this happened in my childhood or somebody said this to me once and then it kind of made it difficult for me to kind of break that pattern and once you kind of detach from it and you see it logically you're like well what would I want to believe what would I choose to believe because if I'm the consciousness and awareness behind all my thoughts and emotions and I'm just watching it how would I like to build my identity how would I like to build my values and beliefs and this is kind of a powerful thought because 
when you realize that you're the consciousness behind everything, you can kind of start to have an influence on these thoughts and emotions and kind of direct it towards building the identity that you want. And this is also slightly talked about in James Clear's Atomic Habits, which is a great book that I recommend reading. You know, you start building these conscious habits after you create this vision of what you want. And this is important that you find what the life you want is and you create your ideal. Because if you want to be autonomous, if you want to be, if you want to live the life that you want to live and not live a prescribed life and follow someone else, then you've got to find out for yourself. You know, you can't be given that answer because then you won't really be living yours, you'll be living someone else's ideal. And it's kind of nice to have the autonomy to kind of find the things that you like and create the life that you actually want. So I'd recommend you really go into that and I can't give you the answers for this. This is something that you have to do for yourself. But then with this ideal, with who you want to be, um, an exercise that I found beneficial for this was to look at people that had inspired you and kind of see what it was it in them that inspired me and what, do, what parts of them do I want to embody. And then, um, like James Clear said in Atomic Habits, you can say, what would this person do in this sort of situation, you know? And it's not just the goal, you know, it's not just becoming muscular, it's kind of like the discipline of doing it, the habit of, um, the habit of enforcing the identity. And with your habits, you're casting votes to the self that you want to become. And this is a very kind of high level kind of idea because you know, we all kind of want to be healthy. We're told, be healthy, you know, eat healthy, you know, do the right things, be a good person, get married and these sorts of things. But we never really question, you know, like, why should I get married? Why do I want to get married? Do I want to be healthy? Is that important to me? And it's important to kind of look and ask yourself, like, why is that important to me? Is it important to me? And kind of what are my beliefs and kind of what's the life that I want to live? And then from there, you build the habits that you want to. And this just build, adds so much clarity and purpose to your life because you're starting to realize, oh, this is kind of who I want to be. It may not be like the perfect kind of image of like who you want to be, but you're kind of like, this is a general idea of who I want to be. These are kind of the habits that I can start to implement now to kind of reinforce that identity and kind of get past these limiting beliefs and then build a life towards who I want to be. And you know, the clearer that you get on that vision, the clearer that you get on who you want to be. And that comes through experience, through journaling, through kind of questioning. Um, the more clear clarity that you get with that, the easier it's going to be to kind of take those steps. And the more empowered and the more autonomous you're going to feel, you know, you're not going to be held back by all these um, insidious kind of thoughts and feelings that have come into, to, into you from other people that are kind of holding you back. And you're not living your life based on someone else or what they want or what you think they want from you. You're kind of like, this is what I want. I know why it's what I want. I've kind of seen, you know, results from other people that I've been inspired by. And this is something that I've come to. So I'm going to take steps towards that. And sometimes you kind of take steps towards it and then you realize that's not really what I wanted. So then you have to kind of scrap that vision and kind of reiterate on it and keep, it's like a constant you know, adaptation, it's always kind of building and growing as you grow as well. And that's kind of like, I believe that's the most beautiful way to live your life. And if you'd like to live that kind of life, then, you know, I hope I can be some sort of help for you. So thank you for watching this video, if you did, and I'll see you in the next video.